Hey there, it's Pear. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you my Icon artwork workflow for Elden Ring and some other Souls games. This should apply to other Souls games. Um, I've made a few satellite tools that I often use for managing uh, all of the Icon related stuff that I do. Um, this may be different from your workflow, but I still wanted to demonstrate it to you, so hopefully it can provide you with an easier outlook on being able to do things more efficiently. So here I have uh, quite a few DS2 icons that I made at the time when I was a part of Guard of Eyes for his overhaul mod. Um, I'm just going to be using these as an example uh, so I can show you how I would put these in game normally. So uh, obviously the first thing that we need to do is pack all these icons into DCXs. Now I have a tool called the HD Icons Packer which can be found on my GitHub page. Uh, it's a public repo. Uh, where you essentially just place your icons inside of this input folder. So I copy these and paste them here. Uh, you'll see all of them are now inside of this folder, and then if I want to pack them all up, all I have to do is run a command window here. It can either be PowerShell or the Windows command prompt. And in this case, uh, these scripts use uh, JavaScript combined with Node.js to do all of their work. Hopefully you have those two things downloaded already. So all I have to do is just say node pack.javascript, and then you do have to specify the current directory of where the input folder is. In this case, you can just do a uh, period and then a forward slash. And then as you can see, it creates an output folder and it essentially just creates all of the unpacked uh, DCX files for you. And then all I have to do is obviously just drag them onto yabber.exe. Now, what about the Yabber XML? Well, for the Yabber XML, I have something for this. It's called the HD Icons XML Entry, uh, Entry Adder. You probably know about this XML. This is the Yabber XML that comes right before the 00 Solo folder. So this is the menu folder structure, as you know, and usually the XML goes here. So what you can do with this tool is you can add new icon entries to it, the number of entries that you're adding. So 109, yeah, 109 and then 19021. And then as you can see, it creates a output XML here. If I open this guy up, and then I scroll down, you can see all of the entries have been added after 19021, just like this. It's pretty much like magic. The last tool that I wanted to show off here uh, is the layout entry adder. So uh, as you know, layout files, you have to manually edit them usually. But in this case, my tool can automatically add entries for this stuff. So all I have to do is I, again, just run a command window in the current location. And then I just say node layout.javascript. And then uh, here, I'm gonna type in, again, the number of entries that I wanna add, which is 109. The second parameter is uh, the number of, I believe, rows that you want. And then the last parameter is the amount of padding you want between each icon, because all of these are linked up in the small icon sheet. So I'm gonna type in three for the padding. That's the standard amount of padding that I typically use in pixels. And there it is. So you can see it generated an output file here. And if we look, all of the new entries are there after 19021, just like that. And uh, you can also see it automatically increments the Y value, and it also increments the X value when it hits the end of a single column. So you can see the Y value then resets and the X value increments to the right. Um, so it's like a down right type of paradigm here. And that's pretty much it. And then all you would actually have to do is uh, for the small icon sheet, I don't have a tool to automate this at the moment in terms of like uh, just being able to run it and not having to do anything else. But there is something you can do with small icon sheets that'll make things exponentially easier. So if I go ahead and open this in Photoshop, so the cool thing with this is I can just go to File and then Automate and then Contact Sheet 2. 
And then in this case, what I usually do is I just select the folder where all of my icons are. And then once I've selected the folder, uh, you're probably wondering how do we set these parameters down here? Well, I have a specific file that allows me to specify the parameters for the context sheet. And um, I actually have this stored elsewhere. Um, but if you want, I can just send you the file for this. And then all you have to do is hit load and then it will preload all of the settings in here. These are set up based on the document size. I believe that you have to subtract 150 from the width and height, depending on the pixel width and height of the actual document, in order for the contact sheet to align all of the icons properly. Then I just click OK, and you can see it just adds all of the icons. OK. So now that all of the icons are in the sheet, what I can go ahead and do, and usually what I do is I just select all of them and then hit Control A uh, and Control C. And then I just do Control B, paste them all in here. And then all I would then have to do is then just align them to the sheet. Obviously, if they all extend past your row count, it might be a little bit difficult if you already have icons in a single column. But usually the typical situation is you would just be able to place them like this in the sheet. I can just do this. And then uh, I also have a grid file that I typically use for my icon sheets uh, that just, you know, is laid out to the specific requirements of the actual sheet itself. So then all you would have to do is then just, you know, shift these over to the left and these over to the left. But you can see all of the icons fit perfectly within their own bounds within each cell box. So there's no offset. There's no... Uh, issue with them. Obviously some of them might clip a little bit, but that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, other than that, it's just shifting these uh, columns to the left a bit, and then you're pretty much done. Uh, that's my typical icon workflow that I usually use when I'm making icons. Uh, hopefully this helped you out a bit. Uh, again, like I said, you can download all of these uh, tools that I have in this folder on my official GitHub page. So this, this, this and this. The HD icons renamer is, uh, I'm not going to go over it right now, but basically you can use this to throw image files in here that have incorrect IDs, and then you can just type in a new ID that you want to start from, and then it will rename all of them according to that ID plus one. So, um, if I, for example, mistakenly had this as 19022 and then 19024, I can just run the script, say 19022, and it will correct every one of the icons in this folder. Hopefully you have an easier time doing icons, and if you need anything else, let me know. See you.